Brand isn't necessarily the key here, it's spring rate. The new Annex stuff is cutting edge with the revalve, but I bet most of the actual felt changes from running the proper lower spring rates, especially if we were talking about street driving. And before Grant gives you the real answer to that, It's April 30th. This is the Annex Suspension Podcast. We are doing a Corolla-focused episode today. And the reason I, we decided we wanted to do this podcast was there was an uptake in interest in the Corolla product I saw in the Facebook groups last weekend. And there was a few reoccurring questions and some questions that concerned me regarding the Corolla product. So we'll go over those in a little bit. How we're going to structure this live stream this time is we'll go over some of the existing Annex products we want to show you guys and we want to talk about. And then we will get to our questions that people asked us beforehand. And then at the end of this, we'll go over the live questions. That guy, Lance, says, yo, Lance, thank <laughs> you for Lance? joining us. Yeah, a lot of familiar names here. Yeah. We've got Aaron, Art Van Trussell in here, our East Coast friends, Progression D friends. Yeah, uh, yeah, buddy, with the E46, thank you for joining us. I saw JDM Flavor, Micah Watt, good to see you. Good to, uh, thank you for joining us, man. All right. <clears throat> got Lance's Facebook messages coming in strong right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So why don't we get started? Uh, we want to display some of the Annex product. Why don't we... Well, what? so first I was thinking we could talk a little bit about the background, like why we started doing, you know, applications to the Corollas and, you know, Annex in general. Got to talk to the mic. Um, uh, yeah, so I thought we could focus on the background of the company and, you know, why we why we got started in, in doing this, right? Okay. Um, so uh, so we've been doing a few live streams and, uh, you know, usually the, 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 the demographic of people that join kind of varies because, you know... Uh, you know, because we develop for FRSs and Subarus, uh, there'll be different people from, you know, all types of uh, backgrounds that will join in. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's, it's helpful that we kind of repeat like the message hold on, on, hold on how on, we started. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So I think it's helpful that we kind of repeat like the, our background and, you know, how we, how we got here and why we started this business. Um, so, um, Re really quick pause. Eric Teddy says, does Annex have any videos in the works? A Beams 86 driving on track? That would be cool. <laughs> I don't know, Eric. Do we have a video? Wink, wink. <laughs> and then uh, Rico's Way says, what's up? Rico, thanks for joining us. We have all your questions documented, and we'll get to your questions in a little bit. All right, go ahead. Um, but yeah, you know, um, uh, so so the, the Annex team started the company because uh, we felt that there wasn't really a product out there that really allowed us to get what we want out of the car, which is to just enjoy the cars that we that we know and love. Uh, so what I mean by that is, um, you know, like some of us grew up with with installing coilovers and getting a lot of, uh, having to compromise quite a bit, you know, like having suspension that's really stiff or noisy or, or even wasn't tuned correctly. So even though it was uncomfortable, it wasn't developing the performance that we were looking for. Um, and so we kind of saw an opportunity to like take our passion and our technical backgrounds and kind of dive into this, like, you know, head in and just just see what would come out of it. Uh, and this was about three years ago. So the last three years, we've been in warehouses with shock dynos working around the clock, um, just trying different valving and different you know, formulas to try to see if we could make the ideal damper. Um, and we've we've developed some really cool stuff along the way. And it's been uh, it's been really interesting. It's been a blast. Um, so uh, our mission for this year now um, is we want to share what we've learned and kind of let people know like, uh, hey, you know, we've been doing R&D for a long time. We feel like we uh, really understand shocks to a high level. And now's the time they want to tell the world like, we are w ready to build a product that will uh, allow you to enjoy your car more and get the most out of your vehicle. And, uh, you know, we're excited to go down that that path. So I uh, hope you guys will join us. I see a lot of familiar names. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Then Phil says out here from the SF Bay area. Thank you for joining us, Phil. Joshi Roku is our sponsored Corolla driver who drives in Global Time Attack. He runs our CSP product in his F-swapped Corolla Coupe. Thanks for joining us, Josh. Finally. Yeah, actually, yeah. Josh's actual uh, coilovers. It's kind of hard to see in the background, but those are his actual uh, uh, club spec pros that we built for his uh, Global Time Attack adventures. Uh, so yeah, so thanks again for joining us, Josh. Cool. Are we ready to check out some of the product? Yeah, well, um, you know, we also talked about uh, talking a little bit about the product lines that we have. Um, and then I think as I think as we have more people join in, uh, then we can start talking about the the, the pieces that we've developed. Does okay. that sound good? Um, so 
Um, yeah, and so just as a recap, we have we have two product lines. We have Fast Road Pro, uh, which was our first product. That's developed for weekend warriors. Uh, you know, guys that that um, they've tried stuff in the past, and you know, they they maybe they started off like myself. Like I started off with inexpensive suspension, and you know, felt like I wanted a little bit more, and I was willing to to spend a little more for something that was you know engineered and um, and has more attention to detail spent into it. And uh, so, so Fast Road Pro was for those guys that are like, uh, they want to, they want to drive to work. They want to drive in the canyons. They want to occasionally go to the, the track. Um, ride quality is important. NVH, you know, how much noise gets into the cabin is important to them. Uh, Fast Road Pro is for guys like that. And so we focus on having, uh, you know, uh, ride uh, spring rates that are reasonable for, for people that are trying to drive in those kind of environments, uh, but that will still support the car at the, at the, at the track. Um, so that's fast road pro. And then, um, after we came out with that product, we had people asking us, Hey, you know, I, I really like what you guys are doing and fast road pro sounds interesting, but we want to buy, you know, I like to buy suspension from companies that are winning races because that, that pedigree kind of improves the product. And, and we noticed that like, you don't have like, you know, racing records and, you know, podium finishes. And that, that makes me a little bit hesitant to try your guys' brand. So about a year ago, we decided to go racing. So we worked with uh, Eight Six Drive Challenge, which is a local uh, FRS um, a race group up here, and the, the guys are awesome in that group. And we had a, we've had a lot of fun working with them. And we've developed some, you know, custom pistons, custom valving, uh, helper spring solutions, all kinds of stuff that that allowed us to put a, a stiffer spring rate and have more body control, but still be borderline tolerable on the street. Uh, that was always a product goal for us. And we built that into a package it's called Club Spec Pro. Um, that's at a little bit higher price point than Fast Road Pro, but those are the two product lines that we have right now. And currently, Club Spec Pro is not on the website yet. And if you guys are interested in that, it's best to uh, give Annex a call or or uh, shoot us an email, and, and we can get you set up. So, uh, so Zico, do you do you want to talk about um, some of the the questions that come in, or do you want to start? talking about products right away yeah let's start uh talking about products we'll get into uh questions last okay um so you guys can see there's a few things out on the table that we're really excited to to show you you know part of the reason that we want to do this is people were asking like I, it seemed like that many people not just not just the corolla market but just pe outsiders in general um that haven't heard our story and haven't been able to hear our story because we've been relatively silent for the last three years um there was a lot of misconception that that you know we're like other companies where we're just taking a sticker and rebranding something that was made in like China or Taiwan or something like that and and sending it off and just you know packaging it with some nice marketing but we just kind of wanted to show you guys like in person like the kind of passion that we put in these products and the unique solutions that we've created uh just you know just to get the best possible su suspension we can because at the end of the day you know everyone that's on the team uh they're extremely passionate so they're not here with us today. You know, COVID has been kind of interesting. We've had to have a lot. Of, we've had to send a lot of people home for safety reasons. Uh, but on the R and D team, there's there's like four or five guys that regularly come in, and they're all you know they all have a racing background. They're really passionate about cars, and that really shows through with the product. So we kind of want to talk about what we've developed, so you can kind of like get a sense for what we do here and and see the solutions that we made, especially for the A eighty six platform. While you were talking about that, Rico just asked on that note for the 86 drive challenge, how did the, he asked, how did the FR suspension do in the race? So how would you answer that? Yeah, uh, right off the bat, we were, so uh, Joe McGuigan was our first driver. Um, and if you, if you guys uh, aren't familiar, he's, he's been in the racing community for a long time. He started off with drifting uh, an IS 300 and he got into uh, the eight, six drive challenge with, uh, uh, with Rebecca's FRS, which she's pretty much turned into a track car at this point. And so we, we, uh, he had, he had another high end suspension on the car before, but he was complaining that the car wasn't handling the berms or uh, didn't seem to have, uh, as much traction as, as he was looking for. So we started developing some custom parts to try to see what we could do to solve that problem. And we learned quite a bit along the way. I think our first time out, it was moderately successful. He definitely had more grip uh, with the with the car, um, and that's something that we've really focused on is in, is maximizing the amount of grip that's available by building in like it, you know plenty of stroke and and having the compression valving that's you know set up to 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 allow the car to get as much grip as possible. Uh, but we had to learn 
about how to tweak our damping ratios to get the most out of the vehicle. And, you know, honestly, we were, we were a bit over damped when we first went out there. The, there was more damping force than was needed to get the job done. And that, that made the car a little bit tricky to drive, um, you know, at the, at the borderline. So you can kind of see this in our earlier videos that, that Joe's posted, the car is like a little bit choppy. Um, even though he's hauling ass, he's setting records with the suspension, but we kind of learned as, as you know, we went along. Um, so fast forward a year later, we d did a ton of testing. You know, we, uh, we rented out Buttonwillow Raceway and we had a test session where, uh, hold, we on, hold on real quick. So, uh, Geo Daylight says, had been following NX for a while, tried applying to potentially use my car for an R&D vehicle, but I live too far away. Ultimately, very polite and professional in conversation. Thank you, Geo Daylight. And then I see Ride Tyler, also one of our Bay Area locals. Thank you for joining us right now. Yeah, um, so... Yeah, so we had a we had a car that we equipped with sense with shock position sensors. Uh, that was Matt Belter's car, um, and Kevin Schweiger came out. He's a he's an, he's also an excellent driver, and we developed some um, bespoke suspension su setups to try to fine tune uh, the package. Um, you know, we went as far as uh, buying some very expensive Penske three way reservoirs, and we got some consultation help from them, and we installed Penske reservoirs on on the suspension that we tested at button willow. And the reason we did this is so we could very quickly adjust the low speed and high speed compression curves. So we could make sure that, uh, we're getting the performance we wanted when hitting berms or when attacking corners, um, and, and through the transitions. And so that really helped a lot, um, because we could take that information, uh, with the dyno plots that we had for all these different sweeps that we had with the Penske, uh, reservoirs. And we could go to the track and we could test at all these different settings to see, you know, what happens if we have this much high speed compression or, you know, this much low speed compression. And, and we did, you know, a whole day of testing with different tires and, you know, all this at Button Willow. Um, and then we com came back and we built our one way uh, Club Spec Pro to use that same kind of curve and went back and validated it again at the, at the track. And uh, the results were fantastic. The, I, the drivers actually liked our setup more than with the Penske canisters. Uh, and that's because we did some like low speed tweaks um, uh, that really helped things along. But the, the reason I say this is because we just want to emphasize that we tested the suspension a lot and it took a lot of time and it, it cost a lot of money for us to get to that point. But the end result is we're building suspensions that are allowing people to shave off. Uh, I think I think I think Josh said he saved uh, seven seconds versus his last time out at, at uh, Coda, in which you know may not be just the suspension alone, but you know, he was saying that the car felt a lot more uh, uh, predictable and easier to drive at the limit. Um, so that's kind of the validation that that we've been, you know, seeking once we get out into the, the motorsport scene. We'll answer this one question and then we'll get into some of the Corolla specific Annex product. DC5 Twisties, have you guys had any DC5 coilover set out testing yet? The answer is no. And if you want to find out more, our very first live stream is on youtube and then also on audio only podcast so you can find out more about that because this is a corolla only episode all right so grant why don't we go over some of the product we have on the table so far yeah um so there's quite a few things that that we'd love to talk to you guys about um first and foremost you can see these uh roll center adjusters here these got finished like two days ago and uh what this is is we've had people that had annex suspension and they had a beams. Um, they had a. They had a. You know, a lot of a lot of people are installing beams into these A86s, and uh, that typically will have a have the subframe lowered, and so you'll change the roll center uh, on the vehicle, and so so cars with swaps where the where the um, where the cross member is lowered uh, specifically need more help because you'll start to get the uh, lower control arms angling upwards. And this this causes um, a variety of, of you know bad effects such as like bump steer, um, but most importantly the roll center starts to go really low and and you know really quickly what that means is if you have the center of gravity here where my fist is and the roll center is down here you've got a leverage force on there so you're getting you're getting more roll um, with with the car with the same spring rate than you would if the roll center was higher because there's there's less leverage um, up there so, so by by fixing the roll center, you can bring it up, even though you've got a modified car like that. So, um, uh, so we had, you know, we, we worked with the, the R and D team and, um, a couple guys like drew up these really cool pieces and, you know, we thought we'd have some fun and just get the, the beams logo on there. Um, so these will be, a, an option that can be included with the, uh, annex coils, uh, moving forward. 
Um, so you can contact Annex for that or, or hit up Battle Grudge um, and uh, they can get you set up as well. And, uh, the, you know, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of pieces here that are just pieces of plastic. And the reason we have this is to show that we do a lot of 3D printing uh, in-house. And a lot of the parts we make will go through a few different, you know, CAD models to to fine tune on the part that we want, and then we'll 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 print a few so we can actually test it on on a car and make sure everything fits before we go out to production and come up with these pieces. But there's a few there's a few pieces here that we developed, and uh, we can kind of like talk about the story with that. So the RCAs are are one of them. Um, A86 says, "I want them right now, please. Thanks, guys." <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Nick, Nick's an awesome guy, uh, New Jersey with Progression D crew. What's up, guys? Um, yeah, I was telling, uh, as soon as we got these in, I sent a photo over to, to Progression D, and I was thinking about, about Nick, because I know I, I knew he'd be hyped for these, so we'll definitely save a set for you, man. Um, yeah. What else do we have on the table? So, um, we have our adjustment knobs, and one of our... one. You know, because we were trying to develop a, a suspension that we personally wanted to have, one of the things that we didn't like in the past was, you know, just having knobs that didn't really feel good in the hand or like they cut your fingers or something like that or just weren't really pleasing to look at. And since that is, the, you know, once you install a suspension, that's like the main thing that you touch or you see on on the coilovers is the adjustment knob. And we feel like it's it's got to look really nice and feel really good. So we went through uh, probably five different iterations 3D printing these knobs. And I don't know if you can if you want to show them Ezekiel the the progression in front of the camera, but you've got we had a we went through a few different three D prints. You know, unfortunately, we tossed some of the older ones, but you can see the first piece of plastic that we made, and then you know we kind of just painted maroon just to kind of get an idea what it looked like. And then we toyed around with the black version. You can see there's no there's no logo there. And then finally uh, ended up with our our production piece that's that's in red. And uh, uh, you know, and then we we also felt that like you know knobs would sometimes come loose on on suspension, so we uh, we put in the extra time to put two uh, um, set screws. Yeah, set screws uh, on here to make sure that the knob is like centered and it's gonna be tight once it's installed. Um, and so you know, it's just nice. Like every time we open the the hood on a car that we're working on, we get to see those those like nice knobs are that are uh, nice in the hand to work with and. It's just a you know it's it's minor right it's a knob but it shows like kind of the uh, passion that the team has that we put in just to make it like it's as good as we possibly can. Chase in motion just joined us. Hello, Chase. Hey, Chase. And he says they feel really nice to adjust. <laughs> All right. Chase so, is um, Chase is one of our sponsored drivers. Uh, he's going to be competing in uh, Nissan Challenge with his uh, S13. Um, and so he has a prototype set of uh, club spec pros for the S13 chassis. Five Nadim, thank you for joining us. We have your question, so we're going to answer your question. Thank you again for um, answering or sending us your question ahead of time, Five Nadim. This last circle piece, what is this circle piece on the Actually, table? I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that later. Um, okay. So let me grab some other pieces here. Um, they are wonderful. Who's wonderful, Josh? Us or the product? <laughs> All right, so I don't know if you want to. Well, we can leave one RC and maybe put the rest back. Yeah. So, anyone have an idea of what we're looking at here? These phallic-looking purple and black items here. Josh Roku says both. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah. Here we go. So. Um, it's not officially on the site, but we do have true rear options for uh, certain applications, uh, and the 86 is one of them because um, that's been becoming a more and more popular request. And we have some answers to you. A. Sean says top hat. Rico says sex toys. Chase says Corolla cup holder. <laughs> All the above, maybe. <laughs> Let's find out. Yeah, so yeah, you, you guys got it. It's a it's a top hat for the for the rear to allow us to do a true rear uh, conversion, um, and this is an example of what will typically come with uh, true rear coilovers. Uh, so we found we found that over time that uh, so this so if you guys aren't familiar on the back of the car for a true rear setup, you've got a, you've got the shock that mounts to the axle, and then you've got a top hat that allows you to mount it to the to the car, and this replaces the uh, Josh, what do you have to say about the true rear? This replaces the the spring that would be back there, you know, on a on a what we call divorce setup, right? 
Limited is Alex just joined us. Hello, Alex. 86 Josh, she says, exhaust. So what we found is when we when the true rear is up there, this part will bind uh, up on the chassis and, and you might be it, it'll be hard to install, but also more importantly, when we extended the the stroke to allow the shocks to be longer to get the most possible traction, this was actually fouling the, the chassis right at this lip. It, it'd be hitting there. So we decided, okay, we, we need to we need to come up with uh, our own version of this piece so we can uh, get the most performance out of the car. Um, and so at some point we started designing different pieces here, which you'll see actually it's in this order. Then Phil says, says at NX Suspension, thanks for your continual support and innovation for the A86 chassis. Thank Appreciate you. It, Alex. Yeah. That wasn't Alex, that was Phil. Oh, Phil. Thank you, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> oh, Josh Hiroku. I find that the true rear is much more compliant than the divorce setup. Having two cars I can drive back to back mm. is hugely noticeable. Yeah, and I'll, I'll get into why that might be um, as well. Um, but yeah, you, so you can see that we basically, we created some taller top hats that allow us to, to fit a larger physical suspension in there, which means you get more stroke, you get more adjustability, and ultimately more traction. So we went through a few different versions with these 3D printed top hats, and finally we've got the, the piece here, which um, is available for uh, Fast Road Pro and also uh, Club Spec Pro, like what's on Josh's car right now. So to... To talk a little bit about that, um, uh, one reason you might want a true rear suspension on an 86 is, um, you know, if you think is, about uh, it. We'll get to that later because a lot of people ask that oh, okay. question. Yeah, no problem. The Maybe difference between that. a divorced and a true rear. So why don't we, um, if you want to continue with this product or we grab another piece of product to show everyone. Yeah, we can we can switch off to something else. But yeah, in a nutshell, we spent a lot of time on this piece and we're, we're quite proud of it. It really helps the... Um, the <laughs> It really helps the rear suspension to, to work better. I feel like we're on an episode of QVC. <laughs> oh, look, there's only 100 pieces left now. Order now, guys. <laughs> Sorry, you have to, um, uh, this is kind of a new thing for us, so I'm just glad that there's people that are joining and excited to hear what we have to, to talk about. All right, so what do we have left? Just the springs and the lock rings. Yeah, we have lock rings and then the springs. Okay, and then the, the okay. I want to make sure we save like the last half hour for questions. Okay. Oh, last half. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so it sounds like we we're so six six minute call, but we'll go over the last two things we have to show. Okay. All right. Um, do you want to grab the, the at least put away most of those? Yeah. Antonio, thank you for joining us. Which Antonio? Um. My my friend from college, nice. Antonio, nice. he uh, when we were in college, he bought an A86 hatch back when they st it still wasn't cool to have one. So oh wow yeah yeah, Jeff Wolfson, Annex Suspension Home Shopping Network, <laughs> ASMSN. <laughs> Jeff's on the R and D team. We've been spending a lot of time with him recently. All right. So what do we have? What are all these circles? And what is that hook thing next to me? <laughs> I'd, I'd ask the audience to guess, but I don't I don't want to know where that's gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these are lock rings, right? So this is this is what you um, use to adjust the the preload, sometimes right height, but mainly the preload, and also to to lock the shock to the uh, bottom brackets to when you're setting the bump stop height. Um, so this is a this is a typical lock ring. Um, Zeke, if you get a chance, maybe you could show them what that yeah. what that looks like. And then um, these are lock rings that that we designed, you know, once again in in house. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why we wanted to to change that. First of all, these guys are sharp. I don't know how many times I've went to go adjust the suspension. I ended up bleeding, like literally bleeding. Maybe you guys have had similar experiences, but you can kind of you can kind of see those sharp edges. And for whatever reason, that's kind of common in the industry. And I hope I hope that will um, kind of you know at least have the sharp edges knocked off in the future. Um, and the other thing is because the other thing is because there's a, a slit here. Your, your tool that goes on to adjust the, the lock ring will often slip off. So you guys, you know, if you're trying to like adjust the suspension in the dark or like you have the track it, and you're in a rush, like it's kind of a pain because like you have you have a hard time engaging and also getting the proper amount of torque on the on the lock rings. So, um, yeah, um, so for these for these lock rings, we we made a, a scalp centerpiece and actually I can I was showing it at a a little bit of a demo for that. But uh, so you can kind of see the progression. We went from a bare, uh, or you can see this is the lock ring in, in raw form. 
And we also have a couple different uh, finishes on the lock ring, which I'll talk about in a bit. But one thing we're pretty proud of is uh, we developed uh, the lock ring to be a specific shape so that it's going to positively engage, and which makes it way easier when you're adjusting. So you can see that I'm, I'm tilting this now in the lock ring. It's holding up until you get to a certain amount of, amount of twisting. And so this makes it this makes it way easier when you're adjusting it to apply force, and that that lock ring is self-centering on there. Um, so it's it's important because we've got a cutout here on the tool that allows you to put a torque wrench on there and 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 set it to the proper torque. Uh, we need 90 foot pounds of torque to properly uh, uh, get this tight enough against the bottom bracket, and it makes it way easier when the tool is self-centering on there. So you can stick stick the wrench on there, put a torque wrench on there, and tighten. So the limitless Alex says. A lot of sharp edges are due to lazy CAD, etc. Those bits are usually CNC cut out. I think some brands use cast lock rings that are smoother. And he says, but it's cool that you guys are innovating even small bits like lock rings. I mean, even, even if you cut this out smoother, it's still like a hard edge. And uh, regardless, they don't have features like self-centering. And um, like I'm like... Uh, I've, I mean, how many times have I tightened these lock rings? I've never slipped one of these. And we've put a huge amount of torque on these at some times, right? Uh, whereas, like, this, uh, this beveled edge is not going to cut you. Whereas, like, no matter what, this open face is guaranteed to cut you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've had the lock rings around for some time. And it's been nice in the workshop when we're doing R&D vehicles to just be able to grab that as we wish. Yeah. So um, it's I, I just want to point out hmm. Jeff Wilson, Chef Jeff, and ITB Jeff just joined. So <laughs> so thank you, Jeff, Jeff, and Jeff for joining us. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like you know, Alex brings up a good point. I think I think more people could do this, but this definitely costs more. There there requires more time on the CNC machine to to do these shapes and to and to uh, break those edges and um, and and get you know you know uh, just a smoother overall end finish. Um, but we went even further than that. Um, these are, this particular lock ring is from our club spec pro product. This is a hard anodized lock ring that's done in the USA. So we take, we take our, our raw pieces and then we, we go to local anodizing shops here in the Bay area and we get these hard anodized. And if, and if you guys aren't familiar, hard anodizing is a, a different process for anodizing that results in a, a much harder finish. Uh, that keeps it from getting scarred up. So these don't come on Fastware Pro. This is only for Club Spec Pro. And the reason for that is uh, racers tend to be adjusting their suspension more often. Um, but we felt it would be great to kind of give people the ability to have a more durable finish on their on their lock rings. Chef Jeff says, J -j 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 Jeff unit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and, love that. <laughs> and and uh, 86 Joshi says, that's a lot of Jeffs. And <laughs> Chef Jeff, just his rebuttal is not enough. <laughs> Uh, okay, see. so uh, one minute call. So last one. one. All right. Yeah. Um, so this is something that um, uh, Battle Garage worked on, but uh, the Annex team also will employ in our, in our products. So this is a this is a custom spring that Battle Garage sells. Uh, it was designed with Swift Racing Springs to provide the most traction on an 86. Um, so we designed our valving to work in conjunction conjunction with the spring to give the most grip and have the best ride quality for products like Fast Road Pro. Um, you may not want to use a spring when you're going, you know, racing with our comps, but for most people that just want to enjoy their curls in the canyons, uh, it's a great pairing to have use these springs with the uh, with the annex suspension. And um, um, and this is just a just this is a swift spring that we will often equip on Fast Road Pro or our racing products. We've got one last thing to talk about. Yeah. Really quick, Chef Jeff, Club Spec Pro adjustments on the BRZ platform. Is it easy to adjust without removing the shock or removing springs or removing the pressure load? So on the Club Spec Pro, you ne none of our Club Spec Pro product, you have to remove it out. You can do all the adjustments um, in car. Um, yeah, so the knob's yeah. on the top, on front and rear. So yeah. you can get it from the trunk or the engine yeah. bay. Yeah, we will do a ZN6, ZC6 focused episode but for now this episode we're going to focus on the ae86 chassis so and chef jeff i drive to the track and then set up at the track and adjust after the sessions so yeah i mean sounds like you know we developed the club spec pro pro for you know club specs or club racer series so it sounds like csp would be perfect for your zn6 zc6 yeah we have a we have a quick start guide for club spec pro on the zn6 specifically that allows you to set the exact shock height 
and the damping levels and the ride height that that our drivers have been winning races with. So it's 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 ready to go. Um, it's a lot of fun. Cool. I don't know if you can show this to them uh, yeah. in the camera. So what is this final piece? Do we have any? Uh, see if you guys have any uh, ideas on what this piece is. Can you guys tell what that is? So we'll see if anyone uh, has has some ideas. But okay, this is our uh, in-house piston that's double digressive. That um, Nemo AP24 says bump stop, and then okay. Limitless Alex says piston. Joshua Roku says piston. Nice. <laughs> so two out of three. So it's, it's a hard piece of metal. Maybe I could have given that the hint. But yes, this is the piston that controls the fluid flow within the shock. Uh, for us to do a racing product, we needed to create a, a piston that would allow us to, get, to create different types of curves that are better for race cars and not necessarily better for the street. So we still have a street piston that we use for Fast Road Pro, but for our racing applications where it's where we want to put more of an emphasis on transitional uh, speed and being able to handle higher spring rates and also recover from large bumps faster to allow the drivers to have more confidence over, you know, uh, 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 rough impacts of the track, like such as hitting berms and stuff like that. Uh, we made a, we made a piston in house. Um, and you know, again, this is, uh, this is also hard anodized in the, in the USA. And we spent a lot of time developing this piston. Um, but it's a piece that we're quite proud of and allows us to get the performance out of the suspension that, that we strive for. All right. Ready to answer some questions? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So exactly the reason I wanted to do this Corolla specific live stream. Um, is probably based entirely on this question. So we'll answer this heavy question first. On the Facebook group last weekend, I saw a lot of um, Annex versus this company. What are the differences? Which one's, you know, quote unquote better? And I saw a lot of common questions, a lot of misinformation. So we're going to answer all those right now. And Joshi Roku says... Ha ha, curbs go burr. <laughs> All right, so Alex from the Facebook groups. Brand isn't necessarily the key here. It's spring rate. The new Annex stuff is cutting edge with the revalve, but I bet most of the actual felt changes from running the proper lower spring rates, especially if we were talking about street driving. When coilover options became more common for the AE86, they all came out with 8 and 6K spring rates which are too stiff for non-track dedicated setups. What Annex did really is nothing new. They just went back to the, what's tried and true. Old school AE86 tech is basically custom coil fronts with 6 to 7K springs and short stroke rear shocks with 3.5 to 5K springs. I think no matter what coils you want, run, dropping the spring rate down a notch will net some solid improvements. And before Grant gives you the real answer to that, I am definitely not the most technical person on the team, but I know from a fact, I just had a customer car that we installed the Annex Fast Road Pro product on. And that customer and my personal car, we have the same, pretty much the same spring rates. The difference is my car has the really old original valving, right? So my car has like Annex set number zero. That's right. And, <laughs> and I mean, just from the valving changes, no spring rate changes, completely different. And when um, every customer car I get in, I always do a road test, a comprehensive road test with them afterwards just to make sure the customer's, you know, okay and happy with the car. And uh, Miss, Mr. John, uh, not GSP John, my customer John, um, was like, yeah, man, you guys have really come a long way. Um, so, yeah, Grant, how would you – I'll give this next to you so you can sum it up. Yeah, you know, I uh, – if you don't have uh, money to buy um, suspension like, you know, ours – uh, I would still recommend dropping the spring rate, like uh, like Alex suggested. That will help a lot, but um, to get the most out of it, you have to do a few more things in in addition to that. Um, typically, coilovers will have a certain amount of stroke because they're designed to work with a certain spring rate. Meaning, if you have a really stiff spring rate, your shock's not gonna not gonna move that much. And so, to get the you know the the lowness that that I think coilover companies were targeting. Um, you know, because people were kept, you know, wanting to go lower and lower with their cars, they had less and less stroke. And that works if you're running a spring rate like that. But if you start to soften up the spring rate, you'll, that stroke will start to get used up very quickly. And so you'll be on the bump stops 
um, you know, often, and also the valving isn't designed to be working with a softer spring rate. Um, so there's a combination of things that really go together. Just changing the spring rates is really helpful, but it's not, you know, the end all solution. For example, uh, when we have a softer spring rate, like we recommend for Fastboard Pro, that does mean that the suspension will occasionally be on the bump stops a little bit more because that spring is being compressed. It's it's more it's more easy to use that available stroke to keep the car um, flat relative to the road. You want to let the wheel do its thing, so you don't feel that as a as a passenger. You don't feel that disturbance, so the the car feels more predictable. So we went as far as using a you know a a, a special polyurethane bump stop. Um, that that will engage very progressively to the point that you can't even you basically don't really feel it uh, only on the biggest biggest bumps you realize you're on the bump stops but a, t- a typical uh, coilover solution at least in the lower cost uh, range uh, will have like a hard piece of rubber or or sometimes we've seen them without bump stops at all and so it's really important to have the whole package tuned together um, and then uh, the valving will also help to support support that lower spring rate how do you sum that up I still don't really understand that so He's saying that the Annex product is nothing different. We we just lowered the spring rates. Mm. Um, so what's I mean for the layman like me, what's different? The main things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, the main difference is uh, lower spring rate is one of them. We have more stroke than a typical coilover sl- system, and we also have uh, valving that's designed to support the car uh, more, so you can so you can use that available stroke without blowing through it. Um, so all together, they're important to get the the you know the best possible ride and, and handling package. I hope you're listening, Alex. <laughs> All right, but to, but lower springs is definitely a good start. Um, just we, we want to take it further. Anthony says, when looking at coilovers, what are the pros to true rears versus OEM rears? So by OEM rears, he probably means the uh, OEM divorce setup. Right, right. Um, so yeah, we this this question comes up quite a bit, and you know we've we've learned quite a bit while uh, while working on this this problem. But right here, this is the this is a divorce style spring. That would uh, you know be on the back of an 86, and you can imagine there's one axle going across, right? And then on the divorce setup, here's the center of the car. Here, here's one wheel. Here's another wheel. So right, at this you've got the center of the car here. Usually the divorce spring will go somewhere in between the center of the car and the wheel, right? Um, and, the, and then the shock is outboard of that. The shock is closer to the wheel. So that works really well for packaging, and it's uh, inexpensive to um, to build that kind of suspension system, especially with a live axle. But if you can imagine, it, a lot of this, a lot of suspension tuning has to do with when it comes to spring rates. Anyways, has to do with geom- uh, geometry and leverage. So if you have your spring inboard of the wheel, um, and if you're cornering, you can imagine that that center of gravity is pushing on the axle, and it's got some leverage because the spring's here and the wheel's out here. So that spring is being collapsed uh, more easily. So so if you want to get a certain level of of roll stiffness, like say you have a, a race tire or you know, you're driving at the track, you don't want the car to roll that much. In order to do that, you have to keep increasing the spring rate higher and higher and higher um, to try to support that. But that also means that when you're going over uh, bumps at the track or bumps on the freeway, that you're going to feel that because that spring is compressing less and less. Um, so if you take that main spring and you now move it out towards the wheel, now, that, now there's less leverage because that center of gravity is pushing on something that's supporting it way out here. So that means that you can run a lower spring rate, but still get the same level of uh, roll stiffness that you need. Um, and 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 furthermore, it's, the whole package is a lot lighter than just with the with divorce style spring rate. So when when might someone want to choose a true rear setup? I'd say if if you are racing or you have the um, uh, or you have the attention detail to keep checking back there to make sure bolts are tight um, and 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 you you maintain the car. I'd say that you can you can get away with a true rear setup, um, and the reason I say that is because when you are moving a spring out to the outside, all the way to the car now is on that shock bolt, which wasn't quite designed for that. So if that shock bolt comes out, then you've you've lost the suspension on your car. Whereas at least with the OEM style, you still have that spring there no matter what, even if your shock comes off. So that is you know for people that are driving on the street and they're not really messing with the car that much, and they 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 um, you know just want a turnkey solution, the divorce setup works great. If you're trying to get that last tenth of the track, then then true rear starts to make more sense. So race G asked us on the Facebook Messenger um, about true rears also, but he asked, "Are reinforcement weld plates needed for structural integrity on a true rear?" Yeah, you know this depends on each application. There's some app, there's some cars out there that you just don't want to do this. Period. I'd say Corolla is kind of borderline, and so what I mean by that is. Um, 
you know, if you had if you have a true rear setup, but you are constantly crashing on the bump stops, or you have a really really stiff spring rate, or um, um, or you have valving that's very harsh, where like the the compression is very stiff, so it's transmitting a lot of those upwards pounds right into the chassis. Uh, that might not last as long. But if you have something where you've got a softer cushion, like the bump stop is is designed properly, and you have valving that's soaking up those bumps, uh, we feel that it's it's a lot safer to run a true rear setup. Uh, but in any case, you always need to be keeping an eye on that. And it's up to you to make sure your car is safe enough to run a true rear setup. Josh Roku says, I haven't had that issue. Well, you don't have that issue when your suspension system is properly designed, which not all of them are. Some some true rears out there definitely not properly designed. All right. So Five Nadim, who was on the live stream earlier, rear end tuning suggestions. Pan hard and lower four link ideal angle getting inside tire lift. So I can answer the first two. So typically pan hard bar is to adjust what's called the thrust angle on the vehicle, which is the relation between the front and the rear axle. So if you can imagine when you lower the car, the rear axle goes like this. So pan hard bar is more for al alignment angle. If your car is lowered, you need an adjustable pan hard bar. Ideal four link angle is adjusting the nose up and nose down for a pinion angle on the rear end there's no you need to do research on ideal pinion angle i know um old school guys will say you know pinion angle for to put down the power but that's a little bit outside the scope of what we want to talk about on uh, on this episode getting inside tire lift okay um if your shock doesn't have enough droop, it's very easy to get inside tire lift. Um, if you're running a really stiff spring, like a 6K spring, which is very, very high, actually, if you do the math compared to even race cars, um, and until you start getting into race cars with aero packages, a linear 6K on the back of an 86 is quite stiff. So what that means is what that means is the shock doesn't really compress very much. You know, If you're not using helper, you just have a linear spring back there. If you have a really stiff spring and you put that, that car onto the ground, that shock is only compressing like this much. So that also means that when you're cornering and the car is leaning, your shock can only extend this much as well. So what do you think happens? The, the wheel picks up and you start to get wheel spin. So some people will try to solve this by putting a really aggressive LSD, but you're not getting that traction back. All you're doing is you're breaking the, the rear end uh, out quicker. And so it's more fun, of course. But if you really want to go faster with the car, um, uh, there's different ways to go about it. Uh, for example, um, you know, for us, we'll use a, run a softer spring rate in the rear and then use the overall spring and sway bars to get the right handling balance. Or if it's a true rear setup, we'll use, uh, you know, again, a, a moderate spring rate, but then we'll include a helper spring on the bottom, like on Josh's Club Spec Pro. And that helper spring will allow you to get more droop out of the out of the shocks to keep it from lifting. Owinjo just joined us. He says, hat version grant. <laughs> Owinjo, you missed the last episode. Too bad it's a Corolla episode today, so. <laughs> yes, and you wear out LSDs quicker with lack mm. of droop, Yeah, yeah. says Owinjo. All right, That's so let's try to run through these questions. Evan8611 is also our Bay Area local. Why are pillow ball collars necessary? What are your favorite spring rates for daily driving, canyon driving, drift, and track? So pillow ball collars. I'm actually not sure what he means by that. So I think, um, you know, oh, on ball. camber plates, um, it, on uh, so I think... Pillow ball collars is a very like Japanese way of saying it, but I think he just means camera oh, plates. Oh, camera plates. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like, if you look at Cusco's camera plates, yeah. they say Cusco. They say pillow like ball. Cusco yeah, pillow ball. I'm yeah. used to just seeing the word pillow ball. Um, uh, you know, for the to the top of the camera plate, and you know, simply if your suspension is articulating, you need you need to have a spherical bearing, uh, you know, up there to allow that to happen. And of course, it's really important to use a high quality spherical bearing up there. Because uh, if you don't, you'll start to get some. You'll start to get some play, um, and uh, so yeah, it's important to have a, a good quality uh, camera plate. Yeah. So our top hats, we also use a legitimate sealed bearing. I've seen some other coilovers; they say it's sealed, quote unquote. Mm. But no, like sand and stuff still gets in there. So I've had like I forgot what it's called, like two, the flat bearings before, where oh the needle needle bearings. Yeah, yeah, and they'll like wear into the top hats, and um, they they fill up with like sand and water really fast. Yeah. What are your favorite spring rates, Evan8611, for daily driving, canyon driving, and then drift and track? Drift and track, okay. Um, 
so depending on where you are, that has a lot to do with it. If you live in San Francisco and or some other place like downtown LA where the roads are just horrendous, maybe uh, New York City, uh, I think like a 6K front spring rate and a progressive 4.7 uh, that you can get from Battle Garage is a really good pairing uh, for those kinds of uh, environments. You'll st- it's not like the car's going to be floppy. I mean, these those spring rates are I'm just off the cusp, cusp of my head are probably like four times stiffer than, than what came with the car originally. So it still would be a sporty ride. But if you can get out to you know more rural areas or, or back roads where the roads are a little more flowing, you don't have as many potholes, uh, seven, a 7K and uh, a 4.7 or a 5.5 in the rear uh, is my favorite for that kind of setup. It won't, it won't, if you have someone else in the car that's not a car enthusiast, they'll, they can tell it's stiff, but they won't be flying out of the seat if, if everything else is working well. Um, so there's a lot more technical way to describe this, but I'm just trying to, you know, break it down into, um, how cruel people, uh, uh, you know, are used to dealing with stuff. But, um, yeah, you just want the car to still feel planted. And then we'll use a 5.5 or a 4.7 on the rear, depending on ha- on if it's a hashback where there's more weight or if you want the car to be a little bit more oversteery. So Limitless Alex asks, what do you think is the spring rate difference if you run a divorce versus true rear? Um, okay, so, so two points. So for track, uh, you can we would go up to as far as an 8 or a 9K spring, depending on if you're using an R comp um, tire or not. And then the back, you're probably going to be around like a 5 or possibly a 6K. I'd only use 6K if you have it paired with a 9K in the front. Um, All right. So we're almost 10 minutes. We, we okay. Like nutshell some of these questions. Okay. Um, all right. So Sean one who's been on the live stream this whole time, thank you so much for joining us. What makes these different from the rest of the AE86 suspension companies out? Um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty simple. So since we are Kroll enthusiasts, um, you know, we, there's other cars that we enjoy, but we, we particularly like 86s. Uh, I feel that I think the whole team feels that we spent more time on the 86 than we probably should have. But as a result, if you're considering a suspension for a Corolla, I really hope that you call the Annex guys because um, we've all spent a lot of time on just this car, making sure it's as, it's as proper as possible. So, uh, yeah, in a nutshell, I, I, I think if you're looking for a suspension designed specifically for the 86, we have to be one of the only you know few options in the world. So, uh, yeah, I hope you can at least talk to us so we can kind of uh, get you set up with the best uh, setup for your car. NorCal local Jamaican Finn asks, how are these for daily driving comfort? I, you know, I think our customers can, um, can speak to that, but uh, I, I think it's great. Um, I'll give you one testimonial. Yeah. So I came from a really expensive setup on my Corolla and uh, testing these springs, testing the Annex. Um, I'll just give you guys one uh, one real world testimonial for myself. I had an autocross day at Sonoma Raceway and I remember Grant asking me for feedback afterwards, and I said, yeah, I didn't notice a performance difference, but one big difference I noticed was that the ride to and from San Jose to Sonoma, which is like one and a half, two hour drive, was really surprisingly comfortable. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this... uh, okay, so hi, Albi. Asks, your thoughts on traditional spring and damper setup on the AE86 versus your coilover setup? To be specific, I'm using a TRD blue damper, but I'm unsure of the springs. Primary focus is daily driver with occasional mm. auto X or track days. So stock versus divorce, we answered already. So traditional spring and damper versus our coilover setup. You know, there's there's no particular reason why a spring and shock combo um, isn't going to work really well. So uh, it kind of depends on like what is out there in the market and if you need height adjustability. I'd say those are probably some of the primary factors. So um, I know there's some Coney shocks out there and some Bilstein shocks that work quite well with like a TRD spring or or one of the Swiss springs that that, that we have. Um, some of those are, are are quite nice, and you can still get a spring rate that you want. Um, uh, in particular, we tested some HTS, uh, some HTS shocks and some TRD blues, and we found that those are definitely designed more for Japanese roads because they have a big spike in high-speed compression that uh, doesn't do so well with uh, American like gaps and potholes in the roads. So those are, those are some shocks that um, uh, you might want to make sure you're at the circuit uh, primarily if you want the best possible ride quality. One big disadvantage with a traditional spring and shock in the rear, you can't capture the rear springs. 
Yeah, that's true. So when the so if you like on our crappy roads, if you you can totally lift up the car and the spring will get unsettled, you guys probably know when you go up and down driveways, your rears go. <laughs> All right. Slime Speed Shop, who contacted us yesterday about his beam swapped SR5. Sway bar recommendations. Car is equipped with beam engine and Ford 8.8 rear. Okay. That's that's a that's an interesting combo. Um, one thing that we tell people with, and actually this uh, ties into another question that got asked. If you have a beams, uh, we might recommend different spring rates uh, for that swap. And there's a couple of reasons. If uh, the beams is is going to be a bit heavier than the 4AG and it's the weight's going to be farther forward, so that means you have more weight on the front of the car. Um, so to get the same kind of ride frequency that we are shooting for, uh, which is basically effectively how stiff the car is, uh, we'll usually step it up a little bit on the front spring rate. So someone that was previously using a 7K, we might start to recommend they use an 8K front spring. Now at the same time, that beams has a lot more power and a lot more torque than a 4AG ever will unless it's you know boosted or something um and and when you have a car that has so much uh you know power you want to try to get as much of that grip down as you can to get the most out of that engine because you know let's be like if you have the beams with that much torque if you floor it you can just spin the wheels which is fun but you're not turning into forward momentum so we like to set those cars up a little bit more understeery so that the driver can lay into the throttle and force the rear to rotate and kind of just almost power slide the car through the turns um, but we feel that's the the best way to get the most out of that engine package. So likewise, sway bars, we'd probably use a softer rear sway bar in the rear to maximize that grip. All right, so five-minute call. We're going to answer this last question, and then we're going to take a viewer question. So there's 19 people on this live stream right now. Um, Grant actually had a conversation with JSP John on the phone last night, and two things he wanted to ask is, roll center adjustment and subframe spacers so subframe spacers ties into you know beams is the probably the most popular corolla swap right now Mm -hmm. so how um what's up what are we all probably know what subframe spacers are how do they affect my suspension yeah we talked about that a little bit earlier but if you have if you have a swap that's lowering the subframe uh uh you're you're lowering the subframe because you're trying to make space for an engine that's much taller than the original 4ag 4ag is extremely compact four-cylinder so when you put a Beams or an F20 or an SR in there, they you often need to lower the subframe just to get the damn engine to fit under the hood. So that does all kinds of things with your geometry. Uh, if your lower control arm was used to be horizontal and the mounting point is at the subframe, if you lower the subframe, your lower control arm is now pointing towards the ground and making a, a really low roll center like we talked about. And that's part of the reason why we have these, uh, these Beams RCAs is to try to help address that. Um, there's one more, let's see. Is it possible to adjust roll center in the rear? Yeah, it is. Um, and then what advantage does that get net me? Okay, without going into big deep dive, yeah. uh, you do want to have what's called a roll axis to be almost uh, almost parallel. So you want to have a slightly lower roll center in the front than in the rear. And there's not a very easy way to measure that, especially for you know uh, home mechanics. So usually you, you kind of, I think a lot of people will test with, uh, you know, kind of empirically to see what works. But um, if you use like something like a Juba ride or a T3 pan hard rod drop mount, that is one way that you're going to uh, in- affect the roll center in the rear. So by lowering the rear roll center, um, you, you will be able to get more inside rear tire grip because uh, the, the, the center of gravity acting on that roll center is picking up the inside tire less. So overall, you can get more grip uh, front and rear for a given spring rate by uh, adjusting the roll centers. Our last pre-written question from Rico's Way, who runs our divorce setup in his Beams-powered Corolla hatch with a Ford 8.8. Should my coilovers be worth more than my car? Will you add air cups to AE86 suspension or any of the Annex line? I don't think any coilover is worth more than his car. I don't think any coilover is <laughs> worth more than that car. Um, and we answered the, the air cup question last time. Um, so yeah, that's the short answer. No plans for, uh, air cups on any of the NX line. All right. So are you able to scroll up? No. Okay. Um, we are four minute call, uh, Raven eight, six 
uh, we answered that question, you're going to have to look at um, the YouTube or the po- podcast audio only afterwards about um, Beam's uh, spring rates. Um, would there be much improvement over an old set of Gretti Type S coilovers with TRD 6K rear springs? I would say, yeah, Gretti, man, that's like a couple decades old coilover already. Yeah. Um, more, so I don't know this for sure, but the Gretti's more than likely are a rebrand of a more you know traditional brand of coilovers that you probably see in the marketplace. Um, so that that means that usually the stroke won't be optimized. Uh, and I actually, I haven't driven a car with Gretti, so I can't, you know, say if the valving is right or not, but usually, usually suspensions of that era have a pretty traditional linear, um, uh, valving curve and there's usually nothing terribly special about them. I know in the rear springs, they use a linear spring, which can be a little bit much for the Kroll. So we, we've, we've had some results with customers using, uh, these springs on Gretti, uh, suspension and that seemed to help a lot, but I, I do think there's, there's better options out there these days. Um, a1 Sean says, Beam's RCAs are negative that you guys make? No, they are regular RCAs. They're just no. about 10 mil higher than uh, what you regularly can get. They're, they're, and uh, our opinion is that's the way to go. Um, NRCAs have some drawbacks with uh, steering kickback. Um, and so it's up to you if that's important or not, but we, we like to just use a regular RCA. Chef Jeff says, sealed bearing lifetime with 10 to 15 track days a year, 5K miles of regular driving. Uh, yeah, it should be fine. Uh, the bearings we use are, are rated for a much higher load than than what Corollas have, and the rubber seal that we that we've used on both sides of the bearing keeps dirt out. So it's uh, it's a good solution for that. I was gonna say we have a few eight six drive challenge drivers that are horrendously hard on their cars. <laughs> One car has been like you know, off-road excursion, multiple cars have been off-road like excursion. Flew in the air. Yeah, like, one one yeah. car got hit and um, the coilovers have all been fined. Yeah, it's one way we can test the durability of our of our uh, shims we source from Europe is by huge impacts like that. Yeah. All right. Evil Sino, thank you for joining us. All right. Oh, uh, I know. Josh. Go ahead. Josh Iroku, I'm glad you guys are doing this. I hope the brand is gaining momentum. You guys are doing a great job responding to your target market. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it, Josh. I mean, we really try our best. Um, that's why exactly we try to give back to the community by doing these live streams. Um, you know, it definitely takes time for us to mm. get all this prepared. I mean, uh, I'm getting all this like a week ahead of time. We both are. So, yeah. And just I just want to remind you guys, like Ezekiel is focusing on the questions that come in ahead of time and the live questions coming in secondary. So for us to get the best answers to you, we, we like to kind of... Uh, uh, collect those first. So try to try to send in your questions ahead of time. Yeah, send in your questions ahead of time. I will make sure we answer them on the on the <laughs> live stream. Yep. All right. It's hard to change these guys' minds. Who said that? Uh, Josh Roku. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's. Uh, um, we'll uh, we're at pretty much our one minute mark. So I think we'll end on that. Oh, a one Sean. Thank you guys for doing this. I, and I'm sure everyone appreciates it. Well, I, we appreciate you joining us, Sean. I mean, thank you so much, yeah. man. If you guys, if you guys want more of this, just, you know, let us know, shoot, shoot Annex a DM. Let us know like, Hey, you know, I, I like the Kroll coverage. I want more. Uh, we'd be happy to do this again. We're, we're kind of doing these based on what people really want to hear from us. Yeah. Or any other chassis for that mm-hmm. matter. We are, I see the 20 second countdown, um, yeah thank you guys again for joining us for this live stream again if there's a chassis if there's a specific topic you want to cover if you have questions make sure um mess send us a message ahead of time and we mm. will 100 percent answer them nice all right cool Woo. i guess i guess it decided it would end for us <laughs> yeah